With near gale force winds forecast for the afternoon, to stay on schedule, racing, for the high performance owner driver RC44 1 designs on day 3, the penultimate day of their world championship, was brought forward by two hours. In the southwesterly breeze, the race area was set up between Hill Head and the Brambles Bank, in the northeastern quadrant of the central Solent, by the Royal Yacht Squadron's expert race management. With strong winds forecast later, day three of the 44 Cup Cows World Championship begins two hours early at 09.30. Even so, much action is expected. Race one gets underway in 16 to 18 knots of southwesterly breeze. Team Nika leads from the first top mark all the way to the finish, covering Charisma, which chases her to the very end. Bullet and Blackstar, among others, have their tough moments but recover safely. C-Ref completes the podium. The 44 Cup's overall leader, Charisma, finally wins her first race of this World Championship as the breeze freshens in race two. Aleph Racing is second and Team Aqua third. With the wind into the high teens, manoeuvres are getting harder, with even the experienced Artemis and C-Ref dipping their spars in the Solent water. In the last race of the day, the wind is gushing to 25 knots and Charisma scores her second bullet in a rapid-fire finish ahead of Team Aqua and C-Ref. This allows Charisma, the defending world champion, to edge ahead at the top of the leaderboard. In light conditions, we're performing as well, but the chances with heavy weather are uh, they're less open ends than with light conditions. So it may look like, but last year we won the Worlds in very light conditions. Overall, really fun day. The boat, boat comes alive at 20 plus knots. It was really gusty. Um, so 16 to 23, um, but, but uh, really fun. Completing the podium, Team Nika and Team Aqua have played the averages well and are five and seven points behind Charisma respectively. But with up to three more races tomorrow, there's still all to play for. It'll be tough because it looks windy again tomorrow, but um, I mean, for sure, it's five points. There's it's five or six boats that all seem quite strong in that condition. Uh, so, you know, never know. But we'll definitely give it our best tomorrow and try and catch them. Stay tuned for tomorrow's grand finale when more big conditions are forecast for this ultra competitive world championship. This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, August 18, 2023. The New York Yacht Club's American Magic brought their AC-40s out today for two-boat testing on a pitch-perfect America's Cup course in stunning summer conditions. Tom Slingsby noted that the class foil was slower than their foil so they tested both whilst they had the different foils on either side of the boat. Hi Tom, another very good day. We had the full range of conditions, from light wind to 18 knots I saw down there now, mm -hmm. and a fair bit of chop. What was the original plan for the day today when you left? Our plan for today was to go out and do a couple of races, uh, and which we did with two boats, and then it was to go into some different system checks uh, for one of our boats, our LEQ. And so we were just testing a few things. Uh, you might have seen we're a bit unstable there at times, uh, testing some different configurations and, and settings, but uh, yeah, it's all part of the learning process. So were you on autopilot at the end of the day? Uh, not sure. We were trying different things. It's not necessarily autopilot, but it's um, yeah, just trying different settings. Because we saw like a couple of big purposes, like kind of the height control system getting out of phase with what happened with the boat. Can you expand a little bit on that? Uh, yeah, it was happening. Um, yeah, we were getting, we we're trying different settings and the tuning and things like that. But it, um, yeah, and so we were getting a bit out of whack, but. The whole time we were talking to our, our team and they were making adjustments and trying to... Uh, we, we knew when we went out that we were going to be a bit unstable, um, which was fine in the light winds, but at the end it came into 18 knots and uh, 
yeah, we decided we didn't want to keep pressing down those those settings. And when you were both both on the water racing, now Magic is back onto one design mode. Mm -hmm. Have you felt the difference in speed now with the uh, standard foils on it? Yeah, we had today. We had one of the one design foils on one side and uh, one of our foils on the other side. And yeah, I mean it's no secret our our foils are faster. Um, so on Port Tack today, um, our boat uh, America, we were pretty fast on on Port Tack uh, compared compared to the one design foils. And how about the um, three star maneuvers? Like they look hard again, like close and very interesting. Does it make a difference those foils when doing all these roundups and fairways? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that the um, the one design foils are very large. They're designed to go through a range of conditions to run World Series events, and our foils are, are smaller. Um, and so, with that, you get a little bit more instability and a little bit. Um, they're just a little less forgiving our foils when compared to the big one design foils, but. Yeah, to win the cup, you're going to have to find that right balance of small foils which you can still manoeuvre on and um, yeah, we're just searching down that path at the moment. There was a strong start for Team Aqua at the 44 Cup, Cows World Championship, with two bullets from three races. Chris Bake's Team Aqua took an early lead after day one. In the first two races, Team Aqua led around every mark. In the opener, after a pin end start, she squeaked ahead of defending 44 Cup Cows champions. Hugues Lepix Arlef Racing coming into the top mark, the French held on to second, but then received two penalty points for a start line collision. Cows on the Isle of Wight is playing host this week to the RC44 World Championship. At the start of race one, with current pushing them over, three boats are OCS premature starters. Team Aqua claims the bullet with the defending champions here on Aleph Racing second and Peninsula Racing third. Among the fleet of nine RC44s is Louise Morton, racing on the class's lone boat with her all-female bullet crew, the first all-female team ever to compete in 17 years of the 44 Cup. They managed to be in the mix on their first day of racing, a rare feat for teams new to this class. It's, they're cracking boats, absolutely cracking boats, really good fun to sail, um, lots of really good crew work, everybody needs to work with each other, it's, there's plenty going on, really plenty going on, and the, and the racing's really tight and really good. Impressively, Team Aqua wins race two as well, showing good form and the potential to recover the title they won both in 2019 and 2021. The overall 44 Cup season leader and defending world champions Charisma finished second with Team Nika third. As, as we always say, it's, it's always very competitive and any boat can, can, can win. We managed to get two good starts which helped us a lot and that was uh, what gave us the advantage the first two races and then the last race was a little bit more difficult. Team Nika, with Nick Asher calling tactics, wins the third race of the day after a constantly approving scoreline. Asher is being assisted by his former Double 470 World Championship winning crew, Elliot Willis, who is providing the team with local knowledge. We're in good shape. We, um, we just need to settle down a little bit and, and get into the regatta, which I think we did throughout the day, as you probably saw from the results. So, yeah, I think we're ready to fight tomorrow and hopefully close the, 
the gap on the front, front two. Uh, Elliot's here this week, uh, he's been really good so far. Um, you know, it's just good to have some, someone I trust and, and knows the venue really well. So we're sort of working, working together well and hopefully it'll turn out good in the end. See you tomorrow when three more races are scheduled, starting from 11.30 local time. We are sailing only media. Please subscribe, share, like, and check the alerts bell. French sailor Clarisse Kramer is embarking on one of the most exciting challenges of her career, competing in the next Vonda Globe in November 2024. After Bank Populaire dropped her sponsorship in January 2023, which left Kramer without a team or a boat and put her Vonda Globe dreams on hold, she will now be joined by new title sponsor, El Occitane en Provence, for a return to sailing following the birth of her baby daughter last November. Kramer started her sailing career whilst at university and went on to finish second in her first solo race, the 2017 Mini Transat. She moved on to the Figaro class before joining her previous sailing team in 2019 to take on her first Vonda Globe in 2020, where she achieved the best performance by a female skipper in the history of the race. Mon premier euh, briefing météo à ma mère. On va voir ce que je comprends. And, uh, it's an unpredictable weather scenario. It's not like a big weather system that you can really play on. And our big, our big concern really is, is, is to start what sails, to have up what sails to anticipate. The wind speed is typically underestimated in the models by a good bit. And then with the current turning and going two knots with you, I think pretty much as soon as we're outside the needles, we're in 30 knots. I've, I think we'll see more uh, 30 plus, yeah. Eh ben, on voit qu'il y a déjà pas mal de vent. À la sortie du soleil, ça risque d'être velu. Mais bon, pour l'instant, on s'approche de la ligne. Enfin, on va hisser les voiles et faire un peu de frais en entraînement au échauffement jusqu'à la ligne de départ au niveau de câble. Voilà. J'étais un peu stressée avant le départ forcément parce que j'ai encore plein plein de choses à prouver sur ce bateau. Moi et moi c'est mon ma première euh, course depuis deux ans. Well, we're, we're getting close to the uh, start for the Amokas. Ten seconds to go. Actually on the Amoka, visibility is very hard. Certainly now we've got some tide starting to run with us here. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens now further up the track. Was it worth just waiting, not having the best start, but being further upwind? Or is it better just to get clean our air and be, you know, further offshore, but just nice and clean and able to go fast? Good start for us. We made out the silence, so we're, we're happy. Boat felt good. Got a few little little technical issues we're trying to trying to manage at the moment, which isn't isn't surprising to be honest, because this is only really, really our second sail ever. But uh, no, really good moment in the silent. Uh, now just going to keep trying to make it through the next challenge, which is this cold front and the lumpy, choppy channel waters. C'est 8000, je sais que c'est ça. Et après, ça se voit, ouais, on les. C'est soit J2, J0. J'ai deux modèles qui font des J0 pendant une heure. Et après, après c'est J2. Parce que dès qu'on est à 300, euh, le virement. Euh, uh, we're waiting for a shift. So, as soon as we are more than north, doing some east, we check. Don't want to miss that. Now we have to take it, like really. 
Exactement le vent qu'on voudrait là, donc okay. il, il y a de la droite là encore. Je pense que ça peut beaucoup rocher et du coup il faut être prêt à rouler. Je ne sais pas si tu as un peu de temps pour faire ça. Oui, c'est ça. C'est un peu de temps pour faire ça. Oui, c'est 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 ça. Oui, Du coup, je vais faire le mode de ma voile plutôt que de suivre Yannick. Et il est stérile, il s'en pleut pas. Je sais pas, un big shift. Like a 40 degree shift. Et ma belle There's a little acceleration down the side of the um, DST when the wind drops off the DST. <laughs> yeah, like an acceleration, and the, it's, the wind actually bounces. So I think it's hitting us and going over them. <laughs> With my tired mind, I think I'm starting to believe it. I think we just the chance. On est des... On a, on, a, on a une espèce de, de, de vitesse qui va nous accompagner jusqu'au bout, j'y crois. J'y crois, j'y crois. C'est trop stylé. 7000 euh, Une demi-heure. Toujours les bateaux les uns derrière les autres. Si peu haut par rapport à eux, euh, je pense que ça va être la seule façon d'y passer. Là, on est passé Bravo, hein Faut qu'il est Faut qu'il est Tu se vois Bon, on est vraiment incroyablement contents parce que franchement, on a mis le bateau à l'eau il y a 15 jours, jour pour jour. On a fait un seul entraînement avec Alan. Euh, et donc on est vraiment hyper content parce qu'on a eu des petits problèmes mais rien de, rien de gros et on, on a pris vachement de plaisir et c'était le meilleur entraînement qu'on pouvait faire donc c'est vraiment trop trop chouette, on a hâte de refaire des régates ensemble. Mickey Beckett of Great Britain overcame a black flag disqualification in the first race to extend his lead in the Ilka 7, thanks to a second in the final race of the day. However, It was Olympic champion Matt Wynn of Australia, who was the big mover, with a first and a third, to move into second overall, 
albeit still 15 points behind Beckett. However, a strong start to competition in the gold fleet, Wern will hope to match his exploits at the Paris Test event when a strong finish saw him overhaul Beckett for victory. It's been a monumental day today at the Allianz Sailing World Championships here in The Hague. All 10 classes were scheduled to race today. That almost never happens. The gold fleets that were racing, it amped up all the tension. It was totally sick. The big story of today was in the Ilka 7. Tonchi Stepanovic of Croatia, who was leading his fleet with a bunch of bullets, got black flagged. It pushed him down in the standings, and Great Britain's Michael Beckett moved up to first. The Ilka 6 women sailors were kept on shore today, but it was in the 49ers where the points were the closest. Botan and Triddle from Spain and Lambrix and Van der Verken from the Netherlands. The women's skiff has a clear leader with Bobek and Netzler from Sweden with a ridiculous 35 point lead. Even though the Japanese pair of Okada and Yoshioka have a 24 point lead in the 470 mixed dinghy, that fleet is getting super tight. In the NACRA 17, the British pair of Gimson and Burnett finally made their way up to second place after a little bit of a slow start. In the women's IQ foil, Britain's Emma Wilson moves ahead of former champion Helena Nosman of France. And in the men's kite, Singapore's Max Mater and Tony Vodacek from Slovenia are still on the top of the leaderboard. That's all for an amazing day here at the Allianz Sailing World Championships. Check us out on all our social media platforms, but most importantly, go to YouTube, because tomorrow, the action goes live. It is the final day for Paraclasses at the Allianz Sailing World Championships. Today, we have the champion crowned in Hansa 303 women, as well as the silver and bronze medals in 2.4, Hansa 303 men, and Ice Venture Connect. Heiko Kruger from Germany. Such a strong performance. He did not need to even be out here on the water today. Well, it was a perfect uh, championship. We had great weather and uh, challenging conditions. It was a great event. Elizabeth Betsy Allison is world champion in the Hansa 303. To represent your nation on this kind of stage is really important and doing so with a disability, it makes me really proud. And Chehotsky, the world number one, overtaking Great Britain just before the line, and a great way to wrap up this world championship. It's been a great week here in Brasimimil since we finished all 10 races as scheduled. I hope you have enjoyed our daily videos throughout the event. A big thank you from us for following, supporting, and cheering for our parasailers. Thank you, Casamania. Thank you, organizers. Thank you, Netherlands. Thank you, Valentia. Thank you, Casamania. Thank you, family and friends. Whatever your ability is, we can all enjoy sailing. In typical 44 Cup style, racing at the World Championship for the leading owner driver one design circuit concluded with two boats tied in the top spot with third place just one point behind with two days of racing left. Day two of the RC44 World Championship in Cowes is a busy one with four races scheduled. This anticipates tomorrow's strong winds when racing may be impossible. In the turnaround of her form, Artemis Racing wins the opening race of the day, finishing with a comfortable lead over Team Nika and third place Aleph Racing. I think everyone knew it was a left-hand track and we just had a really nice start and picked a good lay line. And to be honest, it was you know it's relatively easy from there. We had good speed and so quite happy. Um, in the second one again it was sort of quite a nice race. Disappointed we had a little issue with the kites, we lost the boat, so yeah, you know what these boats are like. You, you make one small mistake and you get punished hard and uh, that's why everyone enjoys it and it makes winning all the sweeter. With the wind dropping and the tide beginning to turn in the Western Solent, Team Aqua wins the second race, the third bullet of the regatta. Aleph Racing is second and still on form, Artemis Racing gets another podium finish in third. Some brave tactics caused Peninsula Racing to win the third race by a huge margin, and going into the final race, three boats are tied at the top of the leaderboard. However, the day's final race is won by Hugo Le Peak's Aleph Racing, elevating the French team to first place, albeit tied on points with Team Nika. 
was really, really hard out there. We had the, the tide uh, turning around during the day, so at the beginning we were trying to stay away from the line and uh, at the end, uh, in the last two races, we were trying to get to the line. So the start was uh, very critical and we actually didn't execute uh, perfectly. We could have done uh, a lot better. I think the racetrack was still uh, very open and with, with all this amount of tight and uh, the shifts because of the rain, this was uh, plenty of opportunities. And I think um, we mainly been able to capitalize on the on the door that they were left open. Behind Alephinika, the 2023 44 Cup several leader Charisma is currently third at the halfway stage of this world championship, just one point off the lead. The first warning signal is scheduled for 09.30 tomorrow morning in the hope of getting some racing in before gale force winds later make conditions unsailable. There's, there's various race areas in the sailing that spots the beauty of this venue and hopefully they can find some slightly less wind and slightly flatter water and we'll be charging in 25 knots, which is what we love. Stay tuned for a breezy penultimate day tomorrow. Tracy Edwards MBE and DP World, the sponsor of the Maiden Factor World Tour, have seen a new opportunity to further their objectives and announced that Maiden and her all-female crew will enter the 2023 Ocean Globe Race. In 1989 Maiden, Great Britain, and Tracy Edwards made history. She entered the first ever all-female crew. She was met with disbelief, raising more than a few eyebrows in what was then a male-dominated sport. Yet, this tin full of tarts, as the late yachting journalist Bob Fisher infamously nicknamed Maiden, gave the boys a run for their money, winning two legs in the Southern Ocean and leading their class. So today we are putting the mast back in Maiden. Um, so it's been out to do some general maintenance and some double checks before we go off onto the OGR. So we're happy with it now, it's being stepped today. We're getting a new boom as well. On top of that, we've got a lot of other maintenance bits that we wanna get ticked off before the start of the race. So we're in really good shape when it comes to September the 10th. First of all, we're gonna be weighing it for our IRC rating, and then it gets lifted up with a crane and then very gently slotted into the boat. So it's a bit of a careful process. Uh, we wanna make sure we don't damage anything and it goes in well and then after that we're going to be tuning the rig so that it's bang on and absolutely perfect for when we're sailing and it's all safe. We were one of the last boats to, to announce that we were going to do the race so we didn't really know we were doing it until quite late on but I think we'll get there we've got another maybe week or so of work and then we should be out sailing and hopefully checking out and making sure that we've got no more issues before race start. All the crew are very excited, yeah, that's an understatement. Um, we've just all come together uh, in the last week, so we're all together um, for the first time, and everyone's very excited, and everyone's working really hard to make sure that the boat's in a tip-top condition. <laughs>